still got one standing on the uh, on the uh, flotation collar. And the uh, spacecraft is now just about 20 yards from the aircraft elevator. A group of NASA officials, representative of McDonnell Aircraft Corporation, waiting to receive it. The boat and aircraft crane is in the out position and it's being hauled steadily now right up under the lip of the number three elevator. That boat and aircraft crane, by the way, is operated by Bolson's mate, Odie Miller, who comes from Monroe, Louisiana. He's the man who will perform the last ticklish operation of GT-6, making sure that the B&A crane comes down correctly and that the uh, spacecraft is hauled on board without any damage to its sensitive equipment. The spacecraft is now underneath the uh, flight deck lift there, and we cannot uh, see the actual operation uh, with our television cameras. We'll pick up the picture again, uh, the live picture of the lift aboard as the uh, crane brings the spacecraft up level with the deck. And now the uh, Navy is getting ready for the reception of astronauts Sharon Stafford. Just in board of number three elevator. It's a crowded scene, a colorful scene. That's uh, Mission Control uh, in Houston looking at uh, this scene being brought to them by, uh, by the uh, television networks. Perhaps you can hear the band. Red carpet has been laid out along one side of it, a line of flags. One of the flags being that of the box. And on the box of the flag is GT-4, GT spacecraft which they recovered in June. The Army, the Navy flag, Coast Guard, and the Marines. A line of Marines and alongside the red carpet, which stretches from here almost to the hatch leading down to sick bay. That's where the astronauts will undergo their medical examination. And those banners, which those banners which were attached to the superstructure of the boss, have now been taken down and reattached here inside the uh, hangar bay, number three hangar bay on the carrier boss. And three, USS Boss. Shiraz, reverence with the American flag. Spirit of 76, season's greetings from the Wasp. And another banner, Gemini 6, enjoying the spacecraft with a bolt of lightning in the background. Off a few yards to starboard, a whale boat with a group of Navy men in it, all wearing uh, life jackets as is customary and required. And we surmise that there's at least one man out there with a rifle to make sure that no wandering sharks intrude into this merry scene. And still farther away, the destroyer Walter, our plane guard destroyer, the destroyer which has been accompanying the Wasp ever since we left Boston over two weeks ago. And between us and the Waldron, a helicopter hovering overhead, creating great turbulence on the water below. Bright, a merry, a colorful, and a cheery scene here on the Wasp. It's just about 12.35 p.m. Wasp time, 11.35 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. The spacecraft has been hauled on board. It's up over the lip of the number three elevator. Very slowly now, it's being lifted up still farther, and it's being brought over the dolly. The spacecraft is seared and blackened, as you can imagine, from its trip down through the atmosphere. This is a familiar sight to all of us who have seen these spacecraft after their space trips. Obviously going through tremendous heat on the way back, but clearly visible is the flag of the United States and the legend United States on one side. On top are the two hatches. One of them is open, just a trifle. Now it's being lowered onto the dolly, very carefully, narrow wind in. Both, hatch, both hatches are open just slightly. A short flight of wooden steps will be brought out to either side. Here they come. The steps painted bright yellow. On one side, the emblem, Task Group Bravo. With the 
There goes Chick Stuka of McDonnell Aircraft. He's raising the hatch over the command pilot. Captain Shira has his hand up, shaking hands with Chick Stuka, with Howard Minners, the recovery physician. In back of Howard Minners is Dr. Don Stolkin. The and there's Tom Stafford. On the other side, Dr. Bill Carpentier. Dr. Minner's assistant, and then Ben James, the NASA Public Affairs Officer. We see now. We got a picture of Wally Shira a moment ago on his side, and now Tom Stafford on his side. Captain Walter Shira of the United States Navy, the command pilot of GT-6, back on board the carrier after their triumphant journey through space and their rendezvous with GT-7. And a bright, warm sun beams down on this gay and colorful scene here aboard the... And what they're doing now is disconnecting their uh, various sensors and various equipment so that they can climb out. Tom Stafford is the first one we see out. Incidentally, the last uh, function aboard the spacecraft uh, before the flotation collar is attached to the turn off the electric power, and that's what they were doing, or actually before they come off. Preceded by Don Stolten and Howard Minners. And looking a little bit worn, needing a shave, they shake hands, they smile, they greet each other. Happy, reveling in their great. And there is Captain Gordon Hartley, commanding officer of the boss, Rear Admiral William Leonard, shaking hands with Vice Admiral Charles Bickley, commander of the Sub-Rail Forces in the Atlantic. Microphone. Without saying anything, there's Joe Siegel of NASA, one of the technical de debriefers. They're walking slowly along the red carpet, walking toward the sick bay, right along the red carpet, past this row of flags, heading towards sick bay, preceded by Don Stalkin, Captain Shira, Major Stalker, then Ben James, walking slowly down into sick bay for the medical examination. A little crush down there, a little crush in the ladder going down to sick bay, just one little down. Captain Hartley, Admiral Leonard, Admiral Weekly, and their party, group of high officers. They're leaving the hangar bay number three right now. The band playing bravely in the background, and this group of two astronauts and a large number of doctors and other officials heading down into sick bay to begin their medical debriefing, which probably will only confirm what a visual analysis has already made perfectly clear. The astronauts are in excellent shape. Captain Shira looking rather sunburned, not from uh, his space flight, but probably from uh, being out in the sun a little bit earlier. Captain Shira looking sunburned, extremely happy. Major Stafford, equally happy, not quite a sunburn. Wally Shira is a great water skier. Well, he probably got that uh, waiting for his flight. It was a long time coming, and it happened very fast when it did come. The spacecraft and the astronauts back on board the carrier. Back on board the carrier, and the whole thing is over. GT-6 has come to a very triumphant and brilliant club. Oh, boy, thank you very much to Alice Townsend aboard the Wasp. What a great, great picture. What an exciting thing that was, wasn't it, to watch these men actually come out of their spacecraft aboard the Wasp. The picture transmitted to us uh, for the first time of such a scene, live, uh, relayed by early bird satellite and uh, back to our home screens. A great sight as Wally Shira, that 42-year-old Navy captain, and Tom Stafford, the 35-year-old uh, Air Force major, but now uh, to be a lieutenant colonel, automatically promoted because of this most successful uh, flight, uh, he, uh, uh, they are back safely aboard the WASP. And we cannot 
possibly express for all of you in this audience who were as excited as we were about seeing these pictures. Enough thanks to the United States Navy for helping us get the equipment aboard the WASP and permitting us to do it so that you could see that great picture. Uh, it took us a while to uh, get it set up. It's the first time we've been able to do it now with this flight of uh, the Gemini 6, but that uh, same equipment will be there on Saturday morning so that we can see, hopefully, Borman and Lovell when they return from the flight of Gemini 7, which is now winging around the Earth in its 179th orbit and is out uh, beyond Hawaii on the way toward another pass over the United States. And they'll be getting the word that uh, their space mates, uh, Shira and uh, Stafford, are safely back aboard the WASP in excellent shape. They came aboard the WASP exactly one hour and five minutes after their splashdown in the Atlantic. They came closer to their target point than any Gemini heretofore, only 12 miles away. Uh, and that's uh, about a, uh, oh, uh, three times closer. More than that, it's almost five times closer than uh, the nearest uh, landing before that. Uh, it uh, is another part of the perfect record of Gemini 6, which established rendezvous in space with Gemini 7 yesterday, the first time that's ever been done, put us in the lead of the Russians in the space race, yep. undoubtedly for the first time, and also put the entire uh, world a little bit closer to true exploration in space. CBS News color coverage of Gemini 6 and 7 will continue in a moment after a pause for station identification. This is CBS.